All right. Hey, everybody. I am Katie Martin, and I'm super excited to have Michelle and Tavine, two awesome middle school teachers, here to talk about um, their classroom, the shift to their online remote learning, and offer up some suggestions and strategies. So I'm going to start with Michelle. Do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Tell a little about who you are and what you teach. Uh, my name is Michelle and I teach in Arcadia Unified with Tavine and so that is how we know Katie because she's helping with our shift to UDL. Um, I teach sixth grade language arts so that is what I'm trying to shift. I also teach in a 90 minute block every day with all of my class periods so shifting from that 90 minutes ELA instruction um, I teach all of our subgroups as well, Title I, ELD, Special Education, Collaboration Push-In class, and one non-subgroup class. So that is what I've been transitioning for those kids. Awesome. Thank you. And Tavine, you want to introduce yourself? Yes. I'm Tavine. I also teach in Arcadia at First Avenue Middle School. I teach middle school math, so grades 6th and 7th. I also have the subgroups for 6th grade, so I do have a push-in collaboration class that I also teach. Um, my classes are not 90-minute blocks. We have <laughs> days where we're about 45 minutes and then on Tuesdays and Thursdays I teach for 35 minutes. This has been a huge shift for me which we're, we're trying to make the best of and I feel like this has been the, a good time to implement those UDL strategies that we've been working on throughout the course of the year just to make learning accessible to everyone especially our, our special learners who don't really <laughs> like math very much <laughs> trying, trying to give them choice and voice it, it's been challenging but it's it's fun having michelle because when we were on the wrong chat earlier that's what we were talking about sharing <laughs> just, you know we're, we're all learning as we go and i think that's the part where the kids are like oh my goodness okay you know my teacher doesn't really know either and she was just <laughs> on a conference call with the principal and you know we're, we're all learning and I feel like that's, that's what we're getting from this, is working yeah. together. And I think that's what I love about the two of you, is you've really jumped in and supported each other. So yeah. I know I told you I was going to ask a different question, but I'd love for you <laughs> to talk about uh, how you've collaborated with each other and the rest of your staff to help each other make this shift to your online learning. So I think that's one of the things that, is a takeaway is leaning on the people that you know that you already share like common values with Tavine and I already commute like communicate and collaborate all through the year right so like this was just another way to do that but I think in instead of finding it daunting we both find it kind of exciting and so even just connecting with those people that you know who will find it exciting is important for you because obviously like this is, we're now looking at the long game, not the short game in terms of how we're going to do distance learning. So knowing who those people are who can support you and who can, you can bounce ideas off of, which is the other thing. I think one of the reasons Tavine and I are like such good friends and good colleagues is because you know, in, in situations like this, you do have to put teacher ego aside and say my idea isn't the best idea what are this is my ideas how can we like collaborate to make it better and i think she and i have always had that relationship so this doesn't necessarily change that but it does take you have to because you're not in a physical building reach out to those people and and make the most of those like professional friendships that you already have with the people that you already already support your practice and so i think that's you know even we got told on a friday middle of the day, hey, we're not coming back on Monday. And immediately it was like, what are we doing? What's, what's going on on Monday? How are we going to do this? And even just like on Saturday, I think I'm going to do this and then I'm going to do this. And, it, and building off each other, I think is super important for kids and for us. Yeah. So I like that you said you have to intentionally reach out because you're yep. used to showing up in schools and being able to collaborate and like run into each other. But when you're, you know, remote, you have to be intentional about how you connect. So that's such a good point for people. I'm curious, so since you found out on Friday, you had to start doing something on Monday, um, what are the things that you guys have put in place? What are the structures that have been really helpful in this shift to the online learning? Well, for me teaching math, especially to sixth graders, because again, I try to change their mindset about math and just teach differently. 
where, you know, the kids are not, because they all come in and they say, well, I hate math. I'm like, okay, well, we're going to change that. Um, the Altitude Learning Platform has actually really helped keep the kids organized. I, of course, after collaborating with Michelle and putting myself in this vulnerable situation where I'm like, okay, what am I going to do? You know, totally judgment-free zone. She said, okay, well, this is what I've been doing. Maybe do something similar because we do share some kids. And I, I have a unit titled Remote Learning where I've just been pushing out cards every day. So when students log in, they can see, okay, day one, this is what we worked on. Day two, this is what we worked on. And, you know, some of them are just Flipgrid videos where on, on the first day, um, I asked the kids to record a Flipgrid video of and show us their workspace. I, I copied our principal's idea. <laughs> you know, I got to show them my, my little coworker who barks all the time and just where I'll be working from, just so they have a general idea of, you know, where I am. Mm -hmm. And then the kids respond, they can, res they responded to my video, they responded to each other, they created their own videos. And it was just cute hearing from them. I love that. Such a good idea. Yeah, I think what we decided kind of what we looking at best practices of what are our expectations versus what would be beneficial for kids. So for us, you know, we are very lucky to have such flexible expectations. Really the expectation was, you know, what CDE recommended, have some kind of contact with your kids. That doesn't mean that I'm teaching a 90 minute class, <laughs> class every day and it's not, not even asynchronously or like just that's not the expectation. I actually took my 90 minute class and it's 20 minutes a day. And so can a, a student accomplish this in 20 minutes? They can, do they have to do all 20 minutes at once? Can some kids spend 45 minutes? They can, and so I think that's where the strategies of UDL really came into place of how are we designing the lesson so that it's still grade appropriate? We're not necessarily making things, you know, saying that we're supporting kids by taking a sixth grader and having them do something at a first grade level. We're having them do something at a sixth grade level, we're putting in more supports and scaffolds in, and then we're saying, is it realistic? Can someone do this? So like Tavine said, like using the old school platform has been super nice because it has the message board for every assignment. <laughs> so that in and of itself has allowed students to connect with each other. But we made a schedule of, you know, three academic assignments a week, that 20 to 25 minutes, and then two days where we are just meeting with kids over a Google Meet, or if you know, you're using Zoom, and it's literally just social. Sign up for your time on a Google Doc. I know who's coming to the meetings. They sign in and it's, it's just talking to each other, seeing each other, being silly, you know? And very few times have we talked about actual assignments where sometimes they wanna share, but other times, you know, and then as a sixth grade team, we got together and made a, a shared Google Doc. So on Monday, what are you doing? On Tuesday, what are you doing? And then label it academic or social so that we could see, do kids, are kids getting seven 20 minute social things or seven 20 minute academic tasks today? So we could kind of space it out between ourselves too and not have overlapping, you know, too much overlapping academic tasks and too many overlapping social tasks so then they couldn't participate in all of them. Yeah, so you guys are definitely focusing on connection. I love that, middle school kids especially. I just think my own kids, they love, like, do I have a Zoom call with my class today? They look forward to just that connection and seeing something different than their house and family. So that connection is super important. And I love how you said, Michelle, like, you know, there are times for academic, but there are times that we're just coming together to connect and make sure that we're, you know, seeing each other. Um, but I also heard the collaboration across the team. So it's good that you guys can plan together, but making sure across the team that you're aligning the resources and the work that kids are doing so it doesn't feel off balance. Um, can you share a little bit more about how you guys have approached that and how, do you, how did you decide as a team how you were gonna work together? I think as a team, we're really taking into consideration that we, you know, we have students who have several siblings, everyone's connected to Wi-Fi, maybe they don't have access to Wi-Fi at the time, or we also have several families who they're first responders so we're not exactly sure the situation that the children are in so we want to be as understanding as possible and I think our our team we I think because I'm on the sixth grade and the seventh grade team the sixth grade team we were very first with planning executing a plan 
um, we have the Google Doc that we share where we make sure that we are not assigning you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 minutes worth of work every single day because it's, I mean, this is emergency remote learning. <laughs> you know, we're not, we're not online teaching. <laughs> That's not what the kids signed up for. And we just want to make sure that we are giving kids the equitable time needed to do all the tasks and where they're not being overwhelmed. They don't feel like you know, oh my goodness, I have to do this for this class and this for this class and that for that class. Yeah, I mean, just managing yourself away from the school is a task in and of itself. Mm -hmm. um, so, and I you know you said this to me, that this is emergency remote learning. A lot of people have been, you know, highlighting that, that this is not something we've planned for. We are in the midst of a crisis in many mm -hmm. cases. And people are in different situations. And so, um, really being able to understand the various places that people are at, teachers and students, is, is really important. I'm wondering, um, as since you guys have been doing this for a couple of weeks now, you're almost pros, what are some things that you're learning about what translates from face-to-face -face that you're still able to do in this context? And what are some things that you've learned, like, we can't do that because, you know, this lesson or the way I've structured it face-to-face -face does not work in this environment? I think um, for myself, I don't, I haven't taken a single lesson and transferred it over. <laughs> Everything has been modified. So I don't know necessarily if it would or would not have worked. I think we're trying to be proactive in what we're giving kids. Um, just because like what Tavine said, taking into consideration the time component, what's going on at home, all of those other, you know, outside things that we can't control. So I haven't actually taken anything that I've done. <laughs> and just pushed it out how it has normally been done. Um, most of what I have seen that does work though, is on tasks where whatever your online platform is, where there's some opportunity for kids to interface with each other, not necessarily you. I, which I was already using this and Tavine was using this too during the school year as well. It's like the message board, you know, application on altitude learning on, you know, Google Classroom, Tavine can speak better to that because she does use that for one of her classes. The idea that kids can comment to each other. Even on one of my cards, I said, find a partner. <laughs> like go on message board, find a partner and do your own Google Meet with them and you can work on this if you want to. If you don't, you don't have to. Um, but utilizing each other, I think is something that's super, super, you know, beneficial to kids because that collaborative process, which is 90% 90, 90 of my class is collaboration in the school year. So that is the one thing I was like, how am I going to do this <laughs> and this collaborative piece? And that's actually, they kind of figured that out on their own, just using message board, which is great. Um, the other thing is, which I really enjoyed in terms of engagement is modifying the product so that the audience is not me, which, you know, I know that we've talked about before. That's part of, you know, UDL and PBL and authentic learning tasks. So the, the ones where the task asked for kids to like display their work in a kind of public way have, have really sparked engagement and high level thinking. And I think that's translated really well. And Tavine, I had an idea for another task and I ran it by her next week. She's like, no, that's good. Try it, try it. Let's see what happens. And I'm like, okay, we'll see what happens. So just that kind of stuff. Like how can I be modifying, you know, language arts standards to show competency at, at these things in a way that engages kids and and makes it authentic to them in the situation we're in kind of has been beneficial. Yeah, and I want to hear from you, Tavine, too, but one, one thing that you said, Michelle, I think is really important just to reiterate that this, a lot of times we're saying like, take my class and now I'm going to do this lecture or just push out resources and we're counting that as instruction instead of how do we use our time together to think about dialogue, interacting, mm -hmm. collaborating, and doing things that are um, authentic to each kid, that's something that we don't want to take away because it worked in the classroom and we have tools where we can collaborate and it's, um, it's really important. But a lot of people have thought, now I just have to record myself and push it out and have everything yeah. asynchronous. And you know, we need to make sure that we're using both of those, um, both of the best of those worlds. Yeah, and I think we talked about that a little last week of, 
are we teaching the assignment so kids can do our specific task or are we teaching the assignment so kids are learning metacognitive skills so they can transfer what they've learned from us to new contexts? And so even looking at what I'm giving kids in terms of scaffolds and steps of ask yourself this question. I don't care what, what you use, but this is the thinking process, which we work on during the school year. But now it's really being put into practice of how would you approach this? What do you think you should do first? Here's the article, here's the, you know, the task and here's the final product and what are the things you need to do in order to accomplish it? And so even just kind of making that shift to of don't complete my task, know the process of completing this task and then work through that at whatever pace is necessary because we do have the time now. We do, we do have that, you know, personalized pacing for kids at this point and that's that works and is fine too yeah so we have just a couple minutes left and i'd love to be to go to you and what are some just key takeaways that you could offer to teachers if they're thinking about how to shift their practices especially a lot of people in math are thinking you know how do i do this how do i keep my kids engaged how do i teach them the concepts what tips do you have um, to share I feel like as a math teacher before this, um, my goal was, oh my goodness, I'm so behind. The kids are going to test in May. The kids would come in. It's like, okay, guys, we don't have any time. Um, and now that we don't really have to worry about that, my main focus is making sure that whatever I'm assigning has a clear rationale and the students are going to be able to apply that knowledge. Um, if it doesn't, if it's, you know, if I can't clarify why I'm assigning it, I'm like, okay, we're, we're not doing this. <laughs> I'm definitely putting a lot more thought into what I'm assigning and um, making sure that, you know, the three main uh, UDL components that I was focusing on this year was the engagement, um, representation, expression. So giving students task cards where they get to pick the one that they need to do. Mm -hmm. um, just like Michelle said earlier, just because, you know, I'm not gonna assign you first grade level work in sixth grade. No, I feel like all of the students are able to do it, but when they have that choice in the way they are going to execute their plan, that's when they actually wanna do it because they're taking a lot of ownership, um, providing, a lot more examples. Um, the face-to-face, -face, obviously we can't replicate, but the same teaching principles are there. It's just, I have to make sure that I'm doing my part and giving them all the necessary tools to be successful. Uh, whether it's, you know, videos, steps, mm -hmm. and being as clear as possible. Awesome. Well, I think you guys are amazing. I love your energy. I love how you collaborate and are willing to be learners. And because of that, it's been really great to hear your tips. I think key takeaways that I am really getting from this is, of course, the collaboration with the kids, making sure that there's connection and they have um, a place to just be silly and to learn the collaboration with the team so that you're providing the right amount of tasks and support. And then I just really heard you guys focusing on why. Why are we doing this? Um, do they have the right resources? And do they have voice and choice? And can they do it and produce something that is authentic? Um, and Tavine, your words are going to haunt me too, right? Like, why can't we do this all the time? If we think about the tests, <laughs> like imagine if we had this focus all the time. And my hope is that as we go through and learn from this challenge that we can come out the other side and get back into our schools and say, you know what, we are going to prioritize these things. We, it worked when we were remote. Now we can do it even better when we're together in classes. So thank you guys so much for taking the time out of your spring break um, <laughs> to share some ideas. I hope you get to relax and uh, look forward to connecting in the next couple of weeks. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Bye. Oh.